OK, so we need to go faster. And one thing I've heard about quite a bit in terms of going faster is the idea of having a gravity assist, which is using the gravity of a planet to get a bit faster. And we do do this all the time, right? The, in terms of exploring our solar system, this is one of the main techniques used. Even going to Jupiter, things like the Lucy mission, as we talk about in the planets part, go out and do a gravity assist to pick up a little bit of speed and shorten that trip. So let's imagine we want to just go around something really fast. So we have our little satellite going at a certain speed, and we're going to go around something. Something. Jupiter. Jupiter. Earth. And again, anything that has gravity can do a gravity assist. We could do it around the moon, and they did it in the Apollo era to get back. Um, we could do it to Mars. We could do it around a star. Now, that object is moving through space. So as we come around, we can essentially what we call slingshot. We can use the gravity getting close enough so the gravity of the object is now stronger than our speed coming out, starts to pull us around, and we exit that speed, right? Yeah, now just having a mass out there is not going to help you. Exactly. So let's imagine you had a spacecraft and a mass here. As you go close to the mass, sure, you'll speed up as the mass accelerates you in. Then you'd whip around, and then you'd slow back down again. So you'd end up back at the same speed you started with. That's right. So if you just have a stationary mass, it's not going to help you. Exactly. The benefit is if this mass is moving, then you can pick up some of the motion of that mass. That's right. This is the U you've got here. That's right. And basically, the most you can get if you do everything just right is twice the speed of however fast the thing is moving at. Exactly. So you really want the fastest possible moving object mm -hmm. if it exists. And, and again, the ideal case is you only get two times the speed of whatever that object is. Now, of course, you can just kind of do, you know, you can go back and do another loop and do another loop and do another loop. But again, in the ideal case, you actually start to lose a little bit of energy over time. Now, partly, this is due to how you enter the object. So we have our object. And again, this is what you're talking about here, Paul. We kind of assume well, if this object's stationary, sure, we just make a turn. But actually, this object is moving in space. So depending on the angle the object is moving and the way we are moving on the object, will that determine where we deflect, but also by how fast, yep. right? In the ideal case of your 2U, you time it perfectly so that you come around in the exact same direction at the exact same speed. But that's not actually what happens. So something like this one here, what's happening is you're coming up, the, your, your blue is the spacecraft and black is the, the, the whatever. whatever. And it's actually kind of killed your velocity. Exactly. And down here, it's got you going backwards at rather slower. But it looks like you get a better effect, something like this one. They're both starting off at roughly the same direction. And now uh, it's given the blue object a bit more speed, something like this one or this one here. Exactly. So that's actually not your 2U case. That is maybe. One and, a one and a half, one and a quarter. So there's very rarely that the object you're trying to get the gravity assist is aimed perfectly at your target and the exact same speed you can join in. So it's one of these examples where even the ideal case, which isn't that ideal, is actually really hard to execute. And if you want to go past it multiple times, you have to pick up the extra velocity, but have the extra velocity send it back. To that's right. A, 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 so that's, it's all very tricky. It is very tricky, and it's actually not that efficient. Um, it's more efficient than not using it. So in fact, here's a good example of the Voyager system. So this is our speed. So in fact, you saw as we get closer, so we're losing speed slowly, yep. 21, 20. Now we're going to actually lose a little bit of speed as we went out uh, to each of these planets. So in this case, you're starting off with a Voyager probe being launched from Earth orbit. Oh, yeah. And then it got double grabs, first of all, from Jupiter and then again from Saturn. That's right. And we actually launched at 30 kilometers, dropped to 15, went up to 23, and then kind of cruise at a steady 21 kilometers. So in fact, we lose speed along the way and only slowly pick some of it up, not even all of it, leaving the Earth. Yes, because of course you're going away from the, the uh, gravity of the sun. These missions had to be launched at a particular time to take advantage of the plants being lined up. Exactly. So it's launch then or don't launch for decades. That's right. And, you know, and, that's, and this is exactly what you see. This is Voyager 2, which had to do four gravity assists to get by. And, you know, you're, you do gain speed, but you also slowly lose it over time, as he said. Because you're fighting a, a, off against the gravity of the sun. And this is the thing that I think people always ignore, is that we assume, hey, once we're in space, that's it. 
Well, actually, there's a lot of other things that you're counteracting and losing in terms of energy. So remember the gravitational potential energy curve, the gravity of the sun. That's right. Remember, the sun dominates our solar system totally. So even out here, you're still fighting off the gravity of the sun. Exactly. So you have to actually go a really, 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 really long way of getting there. And so if we look at the speed of Voyager, so this is Voyager at speed. OK, so it launched from the Earth, and then as it moved away from the sun, it slows down. So from 35 kilometers per second to about 10 to 12. That's actually a lot of yep. speed it's lost. And then it had a close encounter with Jupiter, which sped it up. But then once it had That's passed Jupiter, it's it still fighting down. its way against the exactly. gravity. It slows down again. But now, because of the boost it got from Jupiter, it's doing a bit better. And then it got a second boost from Saturn. Um, and now, this is the velocity it needs to escape. So it's going to escape from the solar system. It is going to get exactly. interstellar travel. And then the smaller boost should be Uranus and Neptune. Um, and still drifting off. But by the time it's out here, the gravity of the sun is starting to get fairly weak. So it's not going to go down too much further. Exactly. Than but as you said, it had to get this critical speed, which is actually not dramatically different than just barely what we got to Jupiter. Yeah, so this makes a huge difference. I mean, as opposed, if, if it hadn't had the gravity assist, it would have kept on going down and probably would never have escaped. Exactly. So these assists have allowed us to escape from the solar system, but still they're going at uh, uh, t you know, maybe 20 kilometers per second, even after all the gravity assists perfectly timed, which you can only do when all the planets are lined up perfectly, which won't happen again for centuries. <laughs> that's right. So again, it's something that works, and that's why we did it, but it's not as the miracle cure as everyone may like. And again, this is a good example also with Cassini. Now, this didn't try to leave the solar system. This tried to go really fast just around Saturn. So we launch, we get a gravity assist. Actually, we went to Venus to get its speed to come back because those planets weren't yep. aligned. So we have to go in versus out. Yep. And so you can see that, again, we go up to Venus, 30. We drop to not almost 15, go up to four, almost 45. It's so had two gravity assists yep. for Venus. So it was in an orbit that looped past Venus twice, both times getting a boost. And Venus, because it's going quite fast, gives you quite a big boost. It does. It's close into the sun. And then it fly, flew past the Earth and got another boost. But they couldn't get such a big boost this time personal because Earth is not going as fast as Venus. That's right. And also because they had to steer in exactly the right direction, the second one. I mean, yeah. they, they couldn't choose the direction to give them the most boost because then it would never have arrived at Saturn. Exactly. And so you only get, again, another small one at Jupiter. And so this is just giving you barely enough to get to Saturn, and then it flies around Saturn for yes, forevermore. Yes, it's an elliptical orbit around Saturn, so its velocity goes up and down because of Saturn's gravity. Exactly. So, you know, if we're, if we're looking at here, we're only cruising at about five kilometers per second doing all this, which if we go back to this, we wouldn't actually really be able to escape the solar system without doing more boosts. Yes. So the gravity assist is something that works, but you have to be idealized of quite literally your spacecraft and the object itself in space, and generally you need lots and lots of objects. And this poses a final problem with interstellar travel. Well, if we want to get the boost from other things, once we leave our solar system, what do we get the boost from? We've kind of run out of other things to get boosts from. Yeah. And we, if you do discover a comet out there or something, or planet X, it's going to be moving so slowly, it's not going to give you much of a boost. Exactly. So really, whatever we leave our solar system at, or really the inner solar system, that's it. So the gravity assist isn't going to be able to solve us getting speed further and further out we go. It may be able to give us a bit of a kick getting out, but we're not going to be able to pick it up as we go.